This mug is possibly the truest thing that I own. We've returned to the bookshelf background. It's been a very long time since I've done a video for this channel with this sort of background. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am back. If you saw my last video, which is not completely certain because who knows how the algorithm works these days. I don't know what you've seen and what you haven't or what you even know exists on my channel. I am now in Montreal. This is my new bookshelf background in Montreal. It's the same bookshelves, pretty much the same books and things on the shelves, just you're seeing it now as a video background because I'm trying to revive this style. I am now living in Canada for the first time and I'm still very new here. We just arrived in mid-February. So at the time that I'm recording this, it's been about a month and a half that we've been in Canada. I've never lived in this country before. I have visited both Montreal and other parts of Canada, but this is the first time that I'm actually experiencing it from a resident perspective. And this has made me very nostalgic for so many reasons, not to mention the fact that it is basically the 10 year anniversary of the year that I lived in Bristol, which was the first time that I lived abroad in Bristol, UK, not Bristol, Tennessee. More common mistake than you would think. I lived in the UK for a year for my master's degree. It was the first time that I lived away from my family. I'd only ever lived with my parents before that point. And of course, then it was my first time living in a new country, in a country that I'd never even visited at that point. So 10 years ago today, I was still uh, in the midst of my master's program, actually towards the end of it, I guess, to be fair. But it's definitely brought on a lot of nostalgia, a lot more than I expected. <laughs> uh, it's been building because I think ever since 2020, basically when we had lockdowns and things, I did a lot of like nostalgic looks through my pictures and my videos and everything. Um, and I kind of stopped making content so regularly during that time. But what I thought would be fun to kind of revive this style of video on my channel is to have just kind of a casual chat with you, but in a sit down style and talk about my experiences overall with living abroad and kind of how I feel now, how I feel looking back and how I feel living abroad again at this point in my life. So I will do a very, very brief recap. I'm sorry for everyone who's been following me and knows all this already, but just in case there's some people who are a little bit newer, I grew up in the Midwest in the United States uh, near St. Louis. Um, I moved to Bristol for my master's degree. I was 20 at the time. I uh, turned 21 when I was in Bristol. After that, I spent a couple of months living in Spain. It was very short-lived and I don't really talk about Spain that much. You'll notice I don't even think I'm gonna put it in the title of this video because I don't have a lot to reflect on because it was a very short kind of experience and I don't feel like I experienced it to its full. And then I moved back to the US for a little bit. Then I moved to France. That was where a lot of people started following me. So you probably know me from that point in my life if you've been following for a while. Um, then I moved to New York, which was back in the US, but I've said it several times and I will continue to say it. It was a very different experience from where I grew up. It felt basically like living in a foreign country because the city and the area, even just the East Coast of the US is very different from the Midwest. So it was very, it was still a very eye-opening experience, but I was back in my home country. And now I'm living in Montreal in Canada. So I am in the province of Quebec, which is the French speaking province. Um, so I'm speaking French a lot, but there's also a lot of English here. Um, it's actually the most bilingual place I've ever lived. It's also very confusing sometimes. Like I have had more than one situation where I've started talking to somebody and I'm trying to kind of gauge if French is the better language or if English is the better language because there are so many people here who are native Anglophone or just more comfortable speaking English than French. But then of course French is the main language. So I never want to like assume that they speak French, but I also don't want to assume that they speak English. It's really like, it's kind of fun, I guess, if you speak both, because you can just go back and forth. I've had so many conversations that have started in one language and kind of merged into the other and then gone back to the other and just kind of gone back and forth because probably the other person is trying to suss out what language I'm more comfortable in as well. So yeah, it's it's been really fun for that reason. Um, but yeah, it's very different. And it's also at the same time, kind of a mixture of what I know already. Sometimes it kind of reminds me of the American side of me. Other times it reminds me of France. So it's really interesting. I'm still figuring it out though. So I, I don't really want to say too much because I don't want to, I don't know, offend somebody watching who is Quebecois or who has spent a lot of time in Quebec or in Montreal specifically. It's interesting, you know, being back in a place where things are not necessarily as simple and straightforward because being a citizen of a place makes your life so much easier. Everything from bank accounts and, you know, getting a driver's license and just figuring out kind of how things work. In Montreal, for example, very random example, you have to have a permit if you have a pet. So, you know, we have two cats, so we had to apply for permits for our cats. There are things like that, that, you know, if you're from a place, maybe it's something you've heard of off and on for your whole life maybe, or, you know, the duration of time you've lived in a place, but it's new when you arrive and there's just a lot of new. 
and each time that I've moved someplace, I've dealt with this. It's nice, of course, that I also have my husband, I'm not moving by myself, so we're kind of figuring it out together because neither of us are familiar, but it's nice to have somebody to struggle with. <laughs> but it is a lot, you know, each time that I move, I think it feels a little bit heavier. Like, I feel like I have more baggage, maybe because I literally have more baggage, like I have more books now than I've ever owned. I still don't have that many, like I would love to fill all of these shelves just full of all of my books, but I try not to buy that many. But I have a lot more now than I did, you know, when I moved from Paris to New York and I had virtually nothing, very few books actually, that I brought from the US to Paris when I first moved there. So each time that I move, it feels like a bigger endeavor. Maybe it's because I'm getting older, maybe it's because I have like physically more things that I would like to be able to bring with me. Maybe it's because we have cats now, you know, and when I moved to Paris, I came by myself because I was coming to join my husband there. We didn't have cats yet. Uh, when we moved from Paris to New York, it was after we had two cats actually, we had both of them by then, and that was a big deal, but I came first uh, before we brought the cats over and then my husband was able to come over, so it was kind of staggered. And this one was all everybody in the car. <laughs> and I take my responsibilities as a cat mom very seriously. And maybe it's that it's not just me anymore, you know? Every time that I uproot and go to a new city, it's a little bit of a balance because I'm super excited to go to that new city, but I'm also more and more aware of what I'm leaving behind. I think this is something I didn't really think about, especially with that first move when I, you know, left my parents' house to go to the UK for the very first time. It was nothing but excitement. Nervousness. Okay, I had some anxiousness about living in a new place and figuring out what I was doing and making new friends and all of that. Like, that is completely normal to have all of those feelings. But I wasn't thinking about what I was leaving behind. I knew that I was going to miss my family. I knew that I was going to miss my friends there. But maybe it was my age at that time too, where I was just ready to go. I wanted so badly to experience the world, to experience something else. Leaving Bristol was really, really hard because I really had made a home there and I had never had that experience of making myself at home and then having to just uproot and leave and I had no idea if I'd ever be able to come back and sadly I have never even visited Bristol after. I have wanted to several times but years of the pandemic kind of ruined some plans for that revisit that I kind of wanted to do. <laughs> Leaving behind all of that was, you know, very difficult. Paris was five years of my life but I think that my husband and I were just really ready to leave Paris when we did. Even still, there's a lot of stuff that I miss. There are just simple things like restaurants that I used to go to. Once in a while I'll wake up in the morning, I did it in New York and I'm still doing it in Montreal, and I'll just kind of get a craving for a specific thing that I would get when I was in Paris, and it actually occurs to me, maybe I'll go to this restaurant today, and then I realize I'm in Montreal, that restaurant is in Paris, there's no way I'm gonna make it there by closing. <laughs> it's very disorienting, and now it's happening here for things in New York as well, so I think if you just spend enough time in any city, it kind of leaves those marks on you. So every time that I move now, it's it's a lot more mixed emotions, and I don't think that takes away from the experience at all. I think it's just a more realistic way of experiencing moving abroad and living abroad. That's probably also one of the reasons why I am very hesitant to do comparison videos and this country versus that country or this city versus that city types of videos. It also could just be that era of YouTube is a little bit in the past. Obviously some people are still making great content on, along those lines, but I don't feel particularly drawn to doing it. I don't even do a lot of comparing like that in my day-to-day -day life. Like I really hesitate to make those comparisons. I do once in a while, we all do. I think it's completely normal and I think it's honestly very healthy to compare different places and get different perspectives because every country, every city, every group of people has something to learn from someone else, especially from a different place. My experiences are only in North America and Europe, so it's a very small pool when you consider the rest of the world, obviously, but there's still a lot of differences. There's a lot of differences between New York and St. Louis, you know, so <laughs> there's a lot we can learn from each other and comparing is, is one of the ways to do that. But it is really hard the more you see just more, <laughs> the more nuance you start to see in your day-to-day -day life, in your experiences and the people that you meet, because each time that I move to a new place I meet new people or people who have different experiences, either from that city or from wherever in the world they've lived, and then we just happen to be in Montreal at the same time, or happen to be in New York at the same time. And the more you see all these nuances and these differences, it becomes harder to make those generalizations. Like, in this place, most people do this. Even if you have like a million caveats, which I have so many now every time I say a single sentence. I'm trying really hard not to do it too much in this video because it's actually gotten to an unhealthy level. But it becomes increasingly difficult to feel confident in any way making any sort of generalization 
about, you know, in Montreal, most people do this, or, you know, this is a more typical experience for someone in New York. And it's, it's really hard to say those things with any sort of confidence. Guess who forgot to charge her battery before she started recording a very long babbly video. I'm now using a battery that has given me a lot of trouble lately, so I really hope this one doesn't die in like two minutes. We will see. Let's talk about life in Montreal so far and my experiences. Not doing comparisons, not making too many assumptions, because again, not only do I not really like to do that sort of thing too much if I can avoid it, but also I'm still really new here, so I'm not gonna make sweeping statements. I don't feel comfortable doing that, at least yet. Probably the biggest change from New York is French. Speaking French again, <laughs> such a simple thing. Not really, I guess. The type of French is different, obviously. Um, it's a lot more than just the accent. That's the thing that people think of. First of all, of course, there's more than one accent, but the accents of Quebec are different from the accents in France. It has been harder than I expected, actually, to use French in my day-to-day -day life and in context that it's been a while since I've used French. Just meeting somebody in the street, somebody asks for directions, just these little things. You know, it's English and French. There's been more English than I expected, especially considering the kind of interesting, I guess, relationship with English that Quebec as a whole has. But really, people are very bilingual, I've found. And sometimes when my husband and I are out and about, we almost always speak English with each other. So even if we go in with French towards somebody, if they've heard us speaking English, a lot of times they'll just switch to English. But generally, I start with French, and if I see somebody you know, in my apartment building or, you know, if I have an interaction with a barista or, you know, whatever, whatever situations come up in day to day, I will default to French and then only switch in English if it's, you know, deemed to be better for both of us. I expected it to be fairly easy to readjust. The last time I moved to a French speaking place, I didn't speak French very well. I wasn't fluent when I moved to Paris. I had a little bit of knowledge of the language, but I'm self-taught completely in French, so it was challenging. It's definitely not that challenging this time, but it has been a switch for my brain. Now that we're really getting settled in Montreal, what I really wanna do is travel more. And that includes travel to the US to see my family and France to see my husband's family, but also in Canada. I really, really wanna see more of Canada. I've been to Montreal before. I've been briefly to Toronto. I've been out West in BC and Alberta a little bit. Um, but I just like to do more of that and experience as much as I can while I'm here. That's something that I really miss from pre-2020 days as well, was just a lot more adventuring and experiencing new places, even if just for a little bit of time, just like a long weekend here and a long weekend there. That was also before we had two cats, so that was a little bit easier, but still. <laughs> I could probably talk for many, many, many hours about this topic and just keep on rambling and keep on going down different bunny trails uh, because I did not make myself a strict outline for this video, obviously. But I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. I'm probably gonna think of things, even while I'm editing this video, that I forgot to mention that are somehow linked to other things that I did actually talk about. I will log those away. Maybe I'll make a part two. Let me know in the comments below if there are things in particular that you wish that I talked about in this video or that you just like to see in a future video. And maybe I will do some more reminiscing on this whole experience. It's a vast topic. Even from my one little perspective, it is a very, very vast topic. So. I've had a lot of fun today just sitting here, you know, not doing a vlog style like I have been doing, but sitting down and doing a sit down style, as we call them in old school YouTube terminology. Enjoying my chai tea. I, it's not coffee today. It is chai because it's actually getting really close to dinner time. Wow, it is later than I realized. Okay, well, <laughs> definitely need to wrap up this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna see what comes next, or especially if you have something to leave down below in the comments, something that you'd like me to talk about next. Make sure you have the notifications turned on so you can see when I post my next video, which will hopefully not be in such a long, like after such a long gap as this one was from the last and that one from the one before it and all of that. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me on this fun little adventure from like place to place over the years, whether you've joined very recently or if you've been with me from the very beginning before I even moved to Bristol. With that, I am out. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you very soon in another video. Thank you.